Yo, what's going on guys? So we are after the day one of the league, so I decided to give you an update. And in case you are curious, uh, my slash plate right now is 20 hours and it is 11 p.m. So we are after 27 hours of the league, which means I just slept for 7 hours, so I am ready for the next day. So if uh, there would be one word to describe my entire league start, that would be mediocre. What I mean by that is basically I didn't really get anything lucky, but I also didn't get anything unlucky. And what I mean by that, by that, usually I have some sort of issues either with crashes or maybe some kind of item is too expensive uh, than I thought it's gonna be. To be honest, this time around I did predict that some items to be more expensive than they usually, so that was kind of expected, but still I would prefer them to be cheaper. But like I said, no issue, no like a real bug, everything that I have been doing have been pretty smooth. So right now I want to go one by one what happened from the first hour to now. Well, obviously not everything, just the most important stuff. So at the beginning of the league, the, first, the most important issue, I guess, was the fact that my uh, custom sounds for my filter did not work, uh, but I just uh, lost five minutes to make uh, some generic filter with some uh, generic sounds and I used it to level up and once I finished the campaign I reached the heist the bug was fixed and I was able to back to go back to my normal filters so that was one issue but in terms of leveling everything was uh, going okay uh, I actually did drop all of my three links and four links in a decent amount of time. In Act 3 I got my four link towards the end, so it wasn't unlucky, wasn't also lucky. Same with three links. Uh, I didn't get them at the beginning of Act 1, but got them towards the end. So like I said, wasn't too bad and not too good. And definitely in Act 4, 5 or 6, uh, I was going very fast, uh, I didn't really have any issues, but then Act 7, 8 and 9, uh, I, was, I was lacking a little bit of damage, so I was a bit slower, so like a small issues there. So like I said, just mediocre leveling. And I finished the campaign in four and a half hours, um, maybe like four and forty, I don't remember, but it also took some break and I had to fix my filter. And I just started doing endless heist. And like I said in the video, at level 59, I started buying lock picking and demolition contract. I did continue the campaign. And uh, after I finished the Mer Club, I started to do heist. And in terms of the sustain for the chancellors and scours, a lot of people have been asking me about that. Uh, I didn't really have any issue with scours. I just constantly or I guess right now I did run out of them, but normally I would have like four, I would go down to two, then I would go back to five, to three, to five, and so on, and I didn't have any issues with them. And in terms of chancellors, the biggest thing you can do if you run out of chancellors, you just grab, let's say like 20 fusings, you go to the uh, vendor, I don't think it matters I'm not up to that just in uh, which act. As long as it's above, I think like act three. You go to Vendor and you can buy Chance Orbs for Fusings. And usually at the beginning of the league, Chance Orbs and Fusing are the same price. So it's a good idea to do it. So I actually was buying a lot of them. I ended up probably buying like 50 Chance Orbs uh, for my Fusings. And that's how I was able to sustain them. And mostly you drop more Chance Orbs from the uh, lockpicking contract rather than Demolition. Because yeah, these were the only two contracts I was doing. That was the plan, just Demolition and uh, lock picking and in terms of the highest at the beginning it was actually pretty easy i had like 2k live uh, maybe like 20,000 evasion my i had my spell suppression cap and rest cap and so far i did not die a single time throughout the entire highs and like i showed you i played 20 hours which means i have been doing highs for around 15 uh, so i did not die a single time it's definitely much easier after the Arc Nemesis uh, nerfs. And right now I do have Spell Suppression Cap, Rest Cap, 4% Chaos Res. Uh, with Flasks I have uh, 52,000 Evasion and I have almost 3,000 life. So yeah. Uh, in terms of the build, so let's talk about the build now. I did buy Queen of the Forest very early on for 20 uh, Chaos and also Devoted Devotion, also for 20k. But right now it is uh, way cheaper, I think. And Queen of the Forest is, I think, around 30, maybe a bit more. Let me actually check. Oh, I can check it in here. 
Oh, because it is a five link. Uh, without five link, it's like 10k. So yeah, they definitely are cheaper. So these are like very good upgrades to go for early on. But the reason why I am at level 68 is because of my Devotus Devotion, because it requires 67. And once my gems reached level uh, requirement 68, I figured, well, why not go to just one more level? I have a lot of contracts. So right now I am ping-ponging between 68 and 69 when I'm doing the highs. So that's simply because of levels of the gems and Devotus Devotion requirement. So like I said, I did buy Quirain very early on. Then Queen of the Forest non-link, just four link. I uh, eventually uh, six socketed it and used two tainted fusings to get a five link. I don't really need six links, so I stayed at five link. And by both devoted devotion, three step assault mostly for the hundred percent increased evasion and movement speed. It is a pretty good uh, stats. I bought very later on. I bought it probably uh, during the last two hours of my stream. Uh, I bought the Mark of Submission with despair which basically means I have a curse on hit, but I don't have any life, any resist, and so on on my uh, ring. And the second ring is actually the best thing I got so far. I did buy item level 67. Item level literally don't matter. Just buy, I just did buy a tier 1 fractured life ring, and I did use one Essence of Delirium. And Essence of Delirium costs 10 chaos, and it guarantees damage over time multi. And I got pretty lucky, and I got tier 1 to all elemental resist. Accuracy is obviously whatever, I don't need it, but it also has a free prefix, which means I can craft minus mana cost. This is a literally perfect ring. I'm probably gonna end up using it uh, even during the simulacrums later on, probably even with the uh, Mage Blood version of the build. And everything else is just a life resist. Here you can see life res, life res, uh, life res, and damage over time with attacks and attack speed base. Uh, here I have some intelligence because I need it for the uh, despair and uh, efficacy. And here I have, uh, in terms of the gems, I have Ballista, Withering Touch, Toxic Rain, Focus Ballista. So this is the way I'm applying uh, Withering Touch. And here Toxic Rain, Efficacy, Mirage Archer, Vicious Projectile, and Void Manipulation as a last link. I am using Grace with uh, Malevolence as my Auras, Flame Dash for mobility when I have to like, avoid to something yet. super fast. Uh, I am still using uh, Smoke Mine, so I can get some uh, movement speed buff and Phase Run on a left link for increased movement speed. Uh, Blood Rage, I'm actually not even using it, I just have it. Uh, and increased duration is linked to Smoke Mine and Phase Run. And I think these are all of the uh, gems. So, in terms of my movement speed, I have with Smoke Mine, with Phase Run and Flask, I have 250. I actually yeah, 255. Sometimes it jumps up to 280. I'm not too sure which uh, buffs I'm missing right now, but yeah. I have between 200 and 300% movement speed. For my flask, I just have two movement speed. To be honest, I don't need granite in my POB. I had granite flask. I realized that I don't need it. Sometimes my flasks are dropping, so I have two of them. Uh, Jade one with the uh, evasion, um, divine uh, mana for the uh, just mana sustain, and this is basically how I'm sustaining my mana, just with enduring mana flask. So you can see here, I'm pretty good on mana. And life flask with instant and bleed immunity. On the tree, well, this is how it looks like. This is one my one only uh, jewel. Uh, right now I was testing some jewels. Uh, I, you shouldn't take this and this. Just go for the uh, some additional movement speed in here. But early on, when I didn't have that much uh, life, I was taking some life points in here, 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 and I think that's it. So this is how you can just increase your survivability. So I think that's everything in terms of the build. Uh, obviously, I still want to show you what kind of uh, currency I did make so far. Uh, I do have some stuff saved in my stash, but before I do that, uh, let me show you one uh, and the size run, just an, as an example. So here I do have a bunch of demolition contracts. So the way I do it is I run a bunch of demolition. Once I am low on them, then I swap to lock picking, which I save up in here. Uh, I have still some demolition, also lock picking in here. After lock picking, I go back to, back to demolition and so on. And obviously every level, when I level up to 69, I buy from Wakano, lock picking and demolition. I D-level, 
I buy again and I save them. And the reason why I run them in uh, like a like a just demolition and then I run just lock picking is because of the follower. So uh, I do have a pretty good equipment and I mostly focus on job speed. So here you see job speed, here additional job speed, here additional job speed, and here even more job speed. I also have some additional modifiers, but uh, I didn't really get uh, that great of the uh, equipment. But I am using this equipment, and when I'm running with picking, I use him use the equipment on cars. And then once I sw when I swap to demolition, I just take all of the equipment. So instead of this one, uh, so I just take here, this, this, and I have all of my good equipment in here. So I don't have to uh, have two sets of equipment. I just have one of them. And Tibbs, I actually did level up Brute Force to level 5, because when you have level 5, uh, you have two uh, ch additional chests that can be uh, opened by him at the end. So I'm actually going to show you the uh, demolition run now. You can't do it with uh, demolition. So with demolition, you can only reach level 4, but if you reach level 4 with Brute Force, the two uh, mechanical chests uh, are going to be able to be opened even in demolition. Previously, before you level up uh, Brute Force, it can only be one chest. So uh, let's grab one Demolition. And by the way, I am rolling them, running them white. So if you see any blue uh, or yellow, that be that's because I just bought them like that from the vendor. I literally don't care about the yes. uh, rarity. Just don't ask me to help also, you I have move. around 20,000 Rogue Markers right now. Uh, in terms of rogue markers, you don't really that you ever need that feeling? many of them. So if nah, you have a, up. a very long uh, contract, you can actually just oh. skip some of the run and just leave if you me. have a lot of them. So what, this is what I'm doing. I am opening the room, but I'm not taking oh, the chest. I am taking all of this. the... Uh, I am going for all of the small ones. So let's go in here, here. This is a bad one to show it on, but usually there is way more chests, the small yeah, ones, I so I'm able to open you all of the small chests. And this is why I am also not using Vindiri, because Good with Vindiri, uh, you can't trouble. open that many small chests. So yeah, usually I reach around like here, alert level with all of the small chests, then I go for the end reward, be sorry. or I just open more yeah. chests is if there is I'm a lot more. Sorry. Uh, small chest, I just, I just open them, I don't go for ah, the end reward. And this is where the uh, Tibbs perk goes in play, because now you can open two chests with him. And obviously I want to open the ones that are long, uh, are, are big chests, because I'm not gonna get the uh, big alert level during the yes, actual alert bar. And also the animation for opening the chest, as you could see when you do it this way, is much faster when uh, when you do it after the lockdown. Also, you still need to kill some monsters to get experience for the uh, additional contracts to be able to be bought from the vendor. And this is also another tip. If you are struggling, you don't have enough contracts, you can't sustain them, just try to kill more monsters in the contract. This way, you're going to level up faster, so you're going to be able to uh, buy contracts faster, basically. Ain't gonna be and I just run out, and that's basically yeah. the contract. So, like I said, this wasn't the best example. Usually, there is way more small chests. I open all of them. I go for the end reward, or just open more small chests. I don't care about the alert level. And then, at the end, I open the big ones. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that was basically an example. And like I said, I did not drop anything... Uh, that would be considered lucky. The best thing I got so far was the Polymer of Divination card, and I actually got three of them, two from the loot, one from Stag Deck, and they can be uh, transformed into the uh, Astramentis amulet, which I sold for like 60 chaos, which basically means uh, I dropped 20 chaos in Divination card, I dropped three of them, so 60 chaos. That was my the best drop so far. Not a single Divine, not a single even Exalt or Annulment Orb, literally nothing so like i said pretty mediocre lake start nothing like really bad but also nothing uh, too good but yeah now let me go over all of the other uh, things that i did buy so far and how much currency i did make so here you can see my uh, stash for the chaos recipe here's all of my loot my loot so you can see i don't have that much money only like 60 chaos but 
uh, here I have saved up all of my other things. So I have Dying Sun, which I did buy for 50 chaos. Uh, I not not 50 chaos, 100 chaos. Right now it is uh, 80, which basically means I kind of lost a little bit of money, but it doesn't matter too much. Just double checking on trade. Yes, it is 85 chaos. I bought it for 100. So I kind of just lost 20 C. But I also did buy Zerfi's Heart very early on. I did buy it for like uh, 50, 60 chaos. And now it is 7 divides. Obviously, because of my video, more people are buying it. So things are going up in price. Unfortunately, if you didn't buy Zerfi's Heart yet, I guess I'm just sorry. It's going to be pretty hard to buy it for you right now and this strategy without Zerfi's heart I'm not sure it's gonna be possible without it. Elegant Hubris I did buy it for like 60 chaos with uh, Caspiro. Uh, just to double check how much is Elegant Hubris with Caspiro? It is 1.5 divines and I bought it for 60 chaos also I think. I don't really remember for how much I did buy some things. So uh, yeah, the Caspiro ones are pretty expensive. Uh, this bow I am gonna craft. It is item level 74. Uh, you want 82 or 78, I don't remember, for the possible tier 1 damage over time uh, from the Hunter Exalted Orb. But to be honest, most of the time you get tier 4 or tier 3 anyway, and tier 4 is item level 68 and tier 3 is 71. So this item level is also fine, I'm just gonna go for either tier 3 or tier uh, 4. I did already craft tier 1 attack speed with alteration spam and anulman orb. Uh, it is white sockets, probably just seller dropped it from the Arc Nemesis monster already as a 6 white socket, I don't really care about that part. But it is my base that I'm gonna craft on. And I did buy Grand Spectrum with Frenzy Charge. Uh, to be honest, I literally the only reason why I, bought, I, why I bought them is because they were 100 Chaos. So 100 Chaos, I figured it is pretty cheap. Uh, this is not correct the price. Right now they actually went up uh, to 200 Chaos. So I almost, uh, I pretty much doubled my money. Well, almost because I think it was 120 I bought them for. Now they are 200. So. Yeah, I did make some money. I might actually end up even using them like in here and here and then uh, sell just one of them and third one. Maybe here I'm gonna use the uh, percentage life one. So yeah, this is my investment. So far I did make, I actually am not too sure how much I make because I still have like some other currencies that I could sell like 50 gem cutters, 50 regals, 70 fusings and so on. But I definitely made more than 10 divines, probably uh, more around 15. I'm not too sure, to be honest. Uh, this bow I did buy for one divine. I do also have some other divination cards, not too many. Uh, but the best thing is that I bought Zerfi's Heart and now it is 7 divines, so I saved myself a lot of money. Also this, I saved one divine. Also, I forgot to mention, in my weapon swap, I have already Empower which I am leveling, it is level 2, uh, with uh, quality. I did use game cutters on it. Uh, to equip it back, I need to equip belt for the strength. This way it is still being leveled up. The, the one thing that I uh, didn't know is that you can actually get decent amount of experience for your gems in Ender's Highest. If I knew about it, I would put some additional uh, gems in here to level up to make additional profit. Uh, from the gems. But yeah, that's basically it. The only things that I'm missing to swap to simulacrums is basically a bow. I need like six divines to finish it. I need to buy Hunter's Exalted Orb also. And everything else is pretty much ready. I only need Cluster Jewel setup, but clusters are very, uh, like, what do you, what do you want? Like, you're uh, budget dependent. You don't have to go for like crazy ones early on. Uh, I'm probably gonna try to go for some cheap ones. So I just need the bow, cluster jewels, and I am pretty much ready. The other things, obviously, you need some rare items, maybe the carcass jug, that would be like probably 10 20 C per item. Uh, boots with onslaught. So all of these items are gonna be like 10 C. So the biggest thing is I just need my uh, bow. So I'm probably gonna farm more heist today on stream probably for another between 5 
to 10 hours, hopefully more towards 5 if I'm going to get lucky. This time I actually have a ton of markers saved up and a ton of uh, contracts, which means I can just rush them without taking the reward at the end and just do them as fast as possible. Uh, this way I'm going to make uh, way more currency per hour. And this is a thing with high early on, you're not going to make that much because you're going to be leveling your guys. Uh, you're not going to have that many contracts save up. You're not going to have that much movement speed on gear. But the more you do it, uh, more contracts you have, more gear you have, more gear on, on your uh, follower you have and so on, and more markers you have saved up. So you can start doing them faster and faster and faster. And now I think the last 5 to 10 divines that I want to make is going to be definitely fast i probably can do it in five hours also i can sell these and i'm gonna get pretty much half of what i need for the uh bow and i'm probably gonna end up doing it i'm just waiting for them to go up even maybe a bit more i guess we're gonna see but yeah that's gonna be it for this video thanks for watching and see you next time